want you all to do, one of the things is kind of like a, there's no many questions, I want to see any questions you guys got, since we have a short time, there's not much time left over, come and see me at the GE booth tomorrow. Also, too, if you come down there, I've got an experiment for, each, for anybody who wants to try it, right? It's an eye, don't be eye-opening experiment, let's put it that way. So if anybody wants to try it, come by the GE booth tomorrow, see if you want to try it. It's going to be really cool. <clears throat> All right. What I got you here is what I want you to do is take away one horse you do every day. I don't care if it's a shot horse or a trim. Take it and throw it away, but calculate that money at the end of the year. Every day you lose a horse. And you say you did eight horses a day, you're only doing seven. All right? I want you to take that because that's where you're going to lose when you lose your depth perception. You're going to lose that horse. That's what's going to cost you. Also, too, is I, I can relate to what an injury I had 30 years ago, all right, <clears throat> is that <clears throat> I had a piece of steel come off, and I was young and, un, in, you know, invincible. Had a piece of steel come off, hit my left eye, bounced off the, op, the, retina, ner the retina twice, lobby and optic nerve. Just so happened I had the right people, right time. Bam, I got it right on it. Saved the eye for five years, and I went blind in it, but then I got it back again anyway. Yes, sir? Did I do something wrong? Huh? You're looking at me like I did something wrong? No. You're, oh, okay. You're still on your first one, right? No, this is the second. Is it? Okay. Sorry. Oh, that's all right. So anyway, so after that first one, $175,000. Fix that eye. 30 years ago. How much that going to cost today? So calculate, you lose a horse a day, what it costs you at the end of the year. I don't care if it's a trim or shot horse, it doesn't make any difference, okay? <clears throat> Everybody thinks about eyesight and they look at this as uh, what kind of subject is that? You know, it's, very, it's not a big deal. I don't care. I, don't, I have no sympathy for anybody that loses an eye shooting horses because it does not have to happen. And I have no sympathy for it. Oh, I got an eye injury and lost an eye. Whose fault's that? That's your fault. <clears throat> okay. One thing when he's talking about eyes, and we're talking about shoeing a horse, we see sparks flying all over the place, right? So this is what we usually see. You don't see that, right? Let me get your way. You don't see that <clears throat> because there's a high speed photography and stuff, and so you just see this stuff flying around. But that's at 2,200 degrees, each one of those sparks. All right? By the time you ever got a slag in your eye, Okay, that's not 2,200 degrees. That's less than 400. All right. Otherwise, your eyeball be fried. That's how come it loses so much speed. <clears throat> but it's still bad. Okay, you take a look at this. <clears throat> Besides not wearing any safety glasses, you take a look at his. See that glow coming off of him? Okay, what that glow is? That's infrared. All right. What you get off a of fire is infrared and ultraviolet. Most people think, okay, infrared, I can figure that out, but not many people know you're getting ultraviolet off it. Now, the problem with your eyes, we'll go, I'll go on that later. Here's what the problem starts. <clears throat> this is a clinch cutter. Everybody has a clinch cutter. Why in the world they let it look like a frickin' mushroom, I don't know. But they do. It must look like it's pretty or something. Every one of those pieces that's folded over like that is a potential rocket. All right, you chip that off, hit the face of your anvil like it did to me, it's a rocket. It'll go right in you. <clears throat> Same thing with printials. Okay, when everybody's reworking their printials, all right, <clears throat> or buy a new one, you've heated it up, cooled it, heated it, cooled it. How many people have seen that? Seen that little crack in it? All right, people have seen that, right? How many people keep using that? I don't care if that thing costs you $1,000. You take it and throw it away because it's no good anymore. The thing's a lethal weapon now. Just throw it away. It was a brand new one, and you saw that. It was not even used yet. Send it right back to whoever made it. They'll give you a new one. That's a lethal weapon. All right. <clears throat> this is another one, too. You've seen a lot of people that have four punches and bob punches welded onto a piece of steel. This is going to happen. We have dissimilar metals welded to each other. You can set up a cold shunt in one, 
that can happen. You hit that with a two and a half pound hammer, that thing's going to come right off and hit that face of the animal and be like a rocket. Come right off again. Anything like that, throw it away. Throw it away. No good. Okay, this one here, this is most of what everyone has these on their printables, four punches. They look like this, right? They're going to mushroom out because they have to be softer than your hammer. That's law of metallurgy. One has to be softer than the other. But what you do with this, you round it off. You grind it down and round it off. You don't leave it like that. All right? Always to remember, one has to be softer than the other. I mean, I only got 20 minutes, so I don't really get into metallurgy and stuff. If you want me to do, I'll do it later. Here's another big thing, too. How many people use a clint, uh, nail nipper? A lot of people use nail nippers. Ever have one hit you in the face? Yep. What if that went in your eye? It's happened. The guys have lost eyes because of it. Because, another thing too, they got in your eye, then go see a doctor within 24 hours, boom, it's blind. Don't go fast, go. It's done. Over with. You're blind. Get a piece of steel in there. You don't see a doctor within 24 hours, forget it. You're blind. All right, you can stop this from hitting you in the face. Easy way to do it is well, I've done that nail nipper right there. Is with Vettec stuff, Equipac. I use the green because it's prettier. But what do you do is just fill that up, and what it does is when you cut that nail, it holds it, drops it out. It does two things. One, one thing it does two things. One is it for just cutting nails, horseshoe nails. It doesn't let a client grab it to cut ten penny nails with it because it's got stuff in it, right? And also, too, that's what you're going to be using it for. It'll give you longevity to your nail nipper, too, in the long run. <clears throat> okay, there's another one right there. That's why you need to wear glasses all the time. Safety glasses. Not just when you're underneath the forge, when you're underneath the horse, too. How many people have got hit in the face with a tail? Yeah. You <laughs> Wipes you out. Does anyone ever get a laceration on an eye because of one? It's happened. We're, and they've lost their, not lost their sight, but lost partial sight. They've cut the lens. So you wear it then. Also, too, look at what we're doing. We're grinding what? Plastics, aluminum, steel, whatever, right? And that stuff's flying all over the place. There's no sense in not to wear, to wear one. This is what we see all the time, right? That's what we think. You know, I get something with sparks flying off, right? And it's just, you take a look at that thing. Remember, each one of those sparks is 2,200 degrees. Just kind of remember that. Each one of those sparks is 2,200 degrees lying around. <coughs> Here, like in this, nobody in this picture is wearing safety glasses. Where's this at? This is Calgary. The guy, yeah, he's got on his forehead. <laughs> He can get blinded, too, by a piece of steel coming off from the guy over here, right? All right, so if you look at this gentleman here, he's bending away from it. Well, he's, besides being hot, uh, obvious, right? He's also bending away because all that stuff flying all over the place, right? Doesn't want to strike him in the face. Duh. All right? So I've done this, and I was going to do pictures, too. I have some really great pictures of eye accidents really gory ones, right? I mean, I'd be a sci-fi movie if you guys like them. But I went, nah, I really can't show them because it's, who wants to see, like, eyeballs dripping and stuff like that? You know, I said, nah, I can't do that. <clears throat> but I have, I'll show you what I do have. This is your gas forge, obviously. This, too, is that we have so many of them now is that they give a ultraviolet and infrared, right? I don't know of anybody yet that's had any cataracts from a gas forge. Not saying it's not going to happen or there isn't somebody out there that has gotten cataracts because of looking at that. Now, I'm going to show you safety glasses that take care of that. All right, we'll go from there. So I showed that, and then here's this gentleman here to go with, back with the infrared and ultraviolet. Here he is here <coughs> wearing safety glasses, and he's not looking away from the fire, is he? He's squinting at me because it's hot. And he's squinting because his eyes are hot. I'll show you how to take care of that. We'll up in a minute. But I want to show you this because, see, the stuff is, 
it's not going to fly up. He's not bending away because the stuff's flying up in his face. So you're burning your face off. But this is one I show you. You can't see it because I don't have it. It's not dark enough. But I want to show you. This is my left eye on the top. It's the only one I want to show instead of really gory ones. I'm going to show you these. This is my left eye on the top. You see that ring in it? You see the ring in it? That's where the steel went in. All right? That's a $175,000 eyeball right there. <clears throat> the bottom one is my right one. All right? See the dent in the center of it? The reason that dent in the center is because I got monocular degeneration in that eye, which was because I had so much damage in this eye. Over the years, this eye was trying to compensate for this for so many years that it overworked this one, and the blood vessels behind went puts, and so I can't see anything out of the center of my eye. I've lost all my depth perception, too, because this one is locked now. This one here, in the, the left one, has a lens in it locked at a certain distance. All right? <clears throat> If you wanted gory stuff, I could have got some, but I didn't think you wanted to see any gory stuff. All right, now we're getting the safety glasses, right? There's all kinds. There's designer ones. There's uh, goofy one looking ones. You're not going to be a dweeb because you've got safety glasses on, you know? I thought so when I was young that I know me. Oh, I don't need that, right? Wrong. <clears throat> but the thing about these glasses now is that you can get them with bifocal, you know? is that we get a little older, we don't read as good as we used to, and you can get bifocals, like 125s and 170s and 200s. The regular ones you find, you know, the cheaters, we call them, right? You can get those. Also, what you can get is these. <clears throat> these, with the lenses, already made up. So you, if you have glasses, you can have these glasses made up to that lens on the right there, and they'll fit right on that safety glass. So if you have your prescription glasses, they can go right on that prescription, right? Now, if you take a look at that safety glasses right there, and that one right there, see the color of it? See the color of that one? Now see the color of those. That's clear, right? Okay, these two here, that one is one step darker than clear. One step. Those ones take out 100 UV, 25% um, uh, infrared. So if you're looking at glasses to take out that, you get 100% UV, 25% uh, um, ultraviolet. Yeah, you're going to ask a question. I didn't either until about two years ago. They, they, you can get them, they make them trifocals. You can get them all kinds. Uh, companies like Lab Safety, uh, Granger, uh, any of the big industrial catalogs, uh, if you're on the, go to the internet, type in safety glasses, and they come up with thousands of different types. You know, I mean, really nice looking designer ones, dark ones, light ones, you know, different types of shades, whatever you want. I mean, ones that look really nice, you know. And the thing about it is, once you put them on at the beginning of the day, and you leave them on, you don't even know you got them on. Just like anybody who's got glasses. They're on, and you just don't even notice them anymore. Wear them all the time until you're done at the end of the day, right? Because this is what happens. Remember, there, there's another exploded view, right? This everything's going like this, hitting you in the face. And you don't want that. And then I have this as my final saying, and I'll, I get very adamant. There's no excuse. None, nada, whatsoever, and not wearing safety glasses. You tell me if there is, if you got one guy in here who can tell me why there's no reason not to wear safety glasses, I want to hear it. Nobody can. Right? Because remember, take one horse a day, throw it out the window. That's how much it's going to cost you when you lose your depth perception. If you want a little experiment, you come by the GE booth tomorrow. And you'll do a little experiment, and you'll feel like a hunchback monkey doing something with a football. <laughs> when I get done with you, you know, you'll feel like a real idiot. But it's just a little experiment to show you what happens if you lose your depth perception. Because in our job of working with horses, is that you need your depth perception when you're working on foot or any kind of horse. Now we got time, so if anybody's not running around out there, question time or comments. 
Yes, sir. Exactly. What he's asking is that, what do you like, like a, a kit to carry with you? Something to carry with you to see you get something in your eye? The easiest thing in the world is a little squeezed bottle of saline solution. All right? You can get them at, you can find them at the pharmacy. They come in a little squeeze. And just take it and just go, just wash your eyes out. And then you can also get, uh, like, the eye allergy stuff, right? We'll, we'll take away the sting and take it, because, like, everybody itches, right? You use the eye allergy stuff, that'll take it out a little bit. But the best thing is to flush it, it's just plain, it's just plain old saline solution in a squeeze bottle and just wash it out. You know, and then if it gets, then if you have it where you think you've got a problem, if you think you have a problem, drop what you got and go see a doctor. Because all it takes, like I said, 24 hours, and go, ah, oh, I can tough this out, I'm a horse here, right? is that I'm tough, baloney. Yeah, just tell me next time you see me that you can't see out of that eye, right? All right, was it worth it? It's worth, and client, what? So if a client goes, my horse ain't done yet, I know he's gonna say that. You can't go, my horse ain't done yet. Oh, screw you. My eye's worth more than that, you know? I, I'm sure they would, I'm, sh I'm sure most horse owners would understand because they're so forgiving. Right? Okay, any other questions about that? Anything about like the glasses themselves? The different types? Can you get anything that's easy to have in your glass? Uh yeah. Safety glasses are UV. They can be hundred percent protected without being shaded. Um, if you look at them, just go to the safety catalogs or I and just look for hundred percent UV. Now, the ones I showed you here, what the thing about, uh, back here. Those right there, and I told you before, are like you feel heat. Now, I really didn't know. These were made for foundry workers. Guys who do like big blow furnaces and all that kind of stuff, is that they're looking in the heat, right? As I found, one of the things that I've been really, when I found them about three years ago now, is that you've been working on a fire, and I'm working on a fire almost all day long. If you're working on a fire, you'll be surprised that you don't feel the heat in your eyes when it takes out that with the ultraviolet. You'd be surprised. I mean, it can look, I, I was, whoa, this is kind of weird, you know? And it was just because wearing these. Now, these, again, are one shade darker than clear. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can still see them. Like I said, they're one shot darker than clear. Now, <clears throat> if, you're, if it's dark, it's dark, you know. You're not going to be able to see anything. But most horseshoes, you know, we do everything by feel anyway, right? But you can still see. I mean, it's not like you can't see. It's, but I'll tell you what, if you go from, one thing I found too is that we've all done this. You go from light to dark, right? I mean, we have such well-lit places and such fine facilities to work in that sometimes your truck is outside and then the, the horse is inside and it's darker than the ace of spades in there. So you're going outside and you come in and you can't see a bloody thing where you're going anyway, right? So your eyeballs are doing this kind of thing, right? But uh, <clears throat> like I said, those things, that'll take care of it that too. You know, from light to dark. Yeah, you're, that's your eyes too have to adjust anyway. So there's nothing we can do about that too much. So, hopefully, I've scared you enough or made you think. Not scared, I don't want to scare you. But I want to make you think about what's going on with your eyes. Right? Now, I could do another talk on, oh, I got them all, on hearing and, and smell. And I can do a whole bunch of things too. But for doing this, it's very important in sight. Because you can lose everything else. But if you lose your sight, believe me, is that I had it so bad when I was blind in this left eye is that I finally was going to have t-shirts made up saying pass on right only. Because I just boof everybody going this way because you forget that you can't see. And I don't know how many people I put in the pucker patch driving down the road. 
oops, jeez, I forgot you were in that lane. You know, kind of like, whoops, that's a no-no. So, <clears throat> if nothing else, glad you guys could come. Hope you have a good time.